problem of humans, we're going to do 5.2a today. We're going to simplify rational expressions. So our objectives are that we're going to simplify rational expressions. Alrighty, the next thing that we're going to do is multiply. Is that going to be true? That's not going to be true. We'll save that for another day. Alrighty, so let's go back and talk about our properties of exponents because we're going to need that information as we manage our rational expressions today. So properties of exponents. Okay, alrighty, I'm just going to draw a line through that. So I'm going to have, if I have a to the m times a to the n, notice that the bases are the same, then I'm going to add the exponents at the top. If I have a to the m divided by a to the n, again, notice that the bases are the same. I'm going to do a to the m minus n. And then if I have a to the m raised to the n, a power to a power is going to be a to the m times n. Alrighty, so now let's go back and redefine what is a rational expression. And if you'll remember, a rational expression is a quotient, and quotient means division of two polynomials. So for example, it could look like x squared minus 4 over x plus 2, or it could be just a number in the top over x squared minus 6, or it could be something like this. So a rational expression can look like a variety of things. And of course, when we deal with mathematics, we have to make sure that we simplify things. So let's talk about the rules to simplify a rational expression. So number one, I want to divide when possible, and typically with this, we can either be talking about numbers or we could talk about expressions, either one. I'm going to put an or in there. We're going to use our properties of exponents. And we're going to use our favorite F word and we're going to use factoring. So we're just going to start in with some examples and we can practice all of our different techniques. All right, so for example number one, I'm going to simplify and I'm going to have 3x to the 7 divided by 2x to the 4th. So when I look at this, 3 and 2 don't have anything in common so they get to stay. But the x to the 7 and the x to the 4th have the same bases. So I'm going to write down, this is the 3 halves, it's going to stay. And then I'm going to write beside it, x to the 7 minus 4, remember our laws of exponents. And so I'm going to get 3 halves x to the 3rd. And you can write it either with the fraction out front, or I could write it as 3x to the 3rd over 2. Both of those things say exactly the same thing, so it doesn't matter. All right, and then if I had to report, because there's really not a lot to report, I would write simplify. All right, let's do our next example, example number two, and we're going to make it a little bit more entertaining. We like it when math gets to be entertaining. And I'm going to have x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now the, the thing that people like to do is they want to start canceling out the x squareds and they want to cancel out the x, but that can't happen. Because these terms are separated by pluses and minuses, nothing will actually cancel. So the next thing that I have to do is factor, which is why we learned how to factor. So x squared minus 2x minus 3 is going to factor to be x minus 3 and x plus 1. And remember, we have lots of tools to help with factoring. You could do the big X or you could do the box. However you want to factor is great. For today, that's not the focus of the lesson, so I'm just going to write down our factored expressions. Alrighty, 
And then on the bottom, factors of four that give me five are four and one, and I'm gonna write x plus four and x plus one. Now notice that the things in the top are multiplied together, and the things in the bottom are multiplied together. And x plus one divided by x plus one is one, so I would draw a line through. Don't scribble, because we might need some more information later, okay? These two are left, and so I'm gonna get x minus three over x plus four. Notice again that I can't cancel the x's because they're separated by a plus and a minus, so this, in fact, is my answer. So then I'm going to report, simplify, and I'm gonna write x minus three over x plus four. All right, let's do our next example, and I think that I, oops, I dropped a pen, pen down. We're just gonna do a lot of different examples. All right, so one of the things that we need to talk about before we go on to the next example is the denominator. And remember that you cannot divide by zero. We can't do that because the world explodes. And if you want to think about it from a more mathematical perspective, you can't divide anything by zero. I can't take a quantity, I can't take a pie, and divide it into zero pieces. That's just weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each of the factors and find out what would make it zero. So I would take that x plus 4 and set it equal to zero and I would take my x plus one and set it equal to zero. And this one I'm gonna get x is a negative four and x is a negative one. These are called the restrictions. It's also called the, where the function is undefined. Because I can't divide by zero and if even one of these is zero, then the whole denominator would be zero. So oftentimes you're gonna be asked to find where is the function undefined. So then I would write undefined at x is equal to a negative one and a negative four. It didn't ask us to do that, but some of our next problems are gonna have that in those examples. All right, for example number three, speaking of, it says to simplify and then our next direction is identify any x values for which the function is undefined. Alrighty, so let's do two examples. For A, I'm gonna do 16x to the 11 over 8x squared. Alrighty, I'm gonna actually do the undefined part right at the beginning, okay? I know that I have an x in the denominator, and so this one doesn't actually have any factors, so I'm gonna write that this function is undefined when x is equal to zero, because even if I square the zero, I would get zero, and eight times zero is zero, and so it would still be undefined. Even though I'm gonna simplify this function, it's undefined in the original function, and so I wanna make sure that I account for that. Now I'm gonna simplify my expression. So 16, I'm gonna split it up into 16 divided by eight, sorry, my brain's going ahead, and then I'm gonna do x to the 11 minus two. Again, noticing that these guys have the same base, and remember laws of exponents, that means that I subtract so 16 divided by eight is two, and 11 minus two is gonna be nine. So then I'm gonna write that my simplified expression is gonna be two x to the ninth. If I had done my restrictions or areas where it was undefined from here, it, I would have missed this x and the zero. So we always wanna look for those undefined things in the beginning. Okay, now let's look at our second one up example three, I'm gonna have three x plus four, and I'm gonna have it over three x squared plus x minus four. So I notice that I cannot reduce any of these because they have pluses and minuses. The top is already done, so I'm gonna leave it alone. 
and in the bottom, this one's going to factor to be 3x plus 4 and x minus 1. And again, you have lots of tools that we've learned to help you with factoring. So now I'm hoping that you'll have that down pat. So now right off the bat, I have two different factors, and this is going to be where my function is undefined. So I'm going to write undefined, and I'm going to take the 3x plus 4, and I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to take the 1 and set it equal to 0. Well, this one's easy. x is 1, and technically it means x can't equal 1. On this one, I'm going to take the 4 to the other side, so I'm going to get a negative 4, then I'm going to divide both sides by 3, and I'm going to get x can't equal a negative 4 thirds. Okay? All right, notice that I can write this either two different ways. I can tell you what x can't equal, or I can tell you where the function is undefined. So in this one, I've done it both ways, so I'm going to write that the function is undefined when x is a negative 4 thirds and 1. You can either do this method or this method. I kind of prefer this one, but either is fine. So now let's talk about simplifying. We notice that we have the same factor top and bottom. Technically, this factor is multiplied by 1. So now I can divide this one out. And then I'm left with, sometimes I circle what's left so I don't lose them. And I'm going to write 1 over x minus 1. Notice again, if I had not looked for those areas that were undefined when I finished factoring, I would have missed one of the two places where the function is undefined. All right, let's do another couple of examples. So for example number four, it's going to have the same directions. And I'm just going to write abbreviated directions. I'm going to write simplify, and I'm going to write undefined. All right, we are going to be given this time 2x minus x squared over x squared minus x minus 2. Again, all of these terms are separated by pluses and minuses, so I can't reduce. My next step is to factor both the top and the bottom. In the top, I notice that these two have an x in common. 2x divided by x is 2, and then a negative x squared divided by x is a negative x. Yay, factoring. This one, the factors of 2 that are going to add or subtract, it's going to be minus 2 and x plus 1. Well, this is kind of an interesting situation. If you look at this term and this term, you'll notice that they are almost the exact opposite. I have a positive 2 and a negative 2. I have a negative x and a positive x. So if I multiply this right here by a negative 1, and technically I could do a negative 1 in the top and a negative 1 in the bottom, then these would cancel. So if I multiply this by a negative 1, right, now these two can cancel. And so I'm left with a negative x over x plus 1, and I did it kind of out of order, my bad. So I'm going to write that the simplify, because I've already done it, is a negative x over x plus 1. And now I'm going to go back and talk about where it's undefined, but I have to do that from the original set of factors. So I'm going to write undefined, and I'm going to take this factor, and I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to take this factor and set it equal to 0. So I get x is equal to 2, x is a negative 1. So I'm going to write that the function is undefined at x is equal to 2 and a negative 1. All right, so sometimes the factoring is a little tricky. If they're the exact opposite, when you did division of the two terms, it would leave a negative 1. All right, I have one more example for us, and then we are done for today. Woohoo! So example 5, and again, I'm just going to write our simplified directions, and they are going to say simplify, oops, I, F, Y, and undefined. So I did write out the full directions earlier, but in the interest of time, that just saves us a little bit of writing. In this one, I'm going to have a negative x squared plus 3x over 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. All right. 
my terms are separated by pluses and minuses, so I can't reduce, I can't do any simplifying because I have to factor first. In the top, I'm going to take out a negative x, and a negative x squared divided by a negative x is a positive x, and 3x divided by a negative x is a negative 3. Down here, I'm going to start with a 2x and an x, okay, because 2 times 1 is 2x squared. I need a 7 in the middle, so I'm going to put a negative 3 out here. This is a negative 6x minus 1x is a negative 7, and 3 times 1 is 3. Now I notice right here, let's go ahead and do our undefined. Okay, I'm going to take the 2x minus 1, and I'm going to set it equal to 0, and I'm going to take the x minus 3 and set it equal to 0. So this one in the top, I'm going to take the 1 to the other side, so I'm going to get 2x is equal to 1, divide both sides by 2, and I get x is a half. And on this one, I'm going to take the 3 to the other side, so I get x is 3. So I'm going to write down undefined, and x is going to equal 1 half and 3, and that means that the function is undefined at those points. Now I'm going to simplify my expression. These guys are multiplied. Those can cancel. And so when I write simplify, I'm going to have a negative x over 2x minus 1. This cannot be simplified anymore because the bottom is separated by a minus or a plus. All right, my dears, that's it for today. I will see you soon.